So in previous videos, we learned what these batteries do. These batteries have spontaneous reactions that make this lead high in electric potential, so high in positiveness, and it makes this lead relatively lower in electric potential, so low in positiveness, more on the negative side. So now that this battery has created these conditions, this difference in electric potential where this lead is high in positiveness and this lead is low in positiveness, what's going to happen to these neutral capacitors? Well, this plate of the capacitor that's connected to this lead that's high in electric potential, high in positiveness, what's going to happen? Well, we know these negatively charged electrons that are on this part of the capacitor are going to start flowing towards this region of high electric potential, this region of high positiveness. And we know that's what negatively charged particles do. Negatively charged particles flow towards regions of high electric potential, regions of high positiveness. We know that's energetically favorable. So for every negatively charged electron that flows in this direction, this region's going to lose a negatively charged particle, so it's going to become relatively positive. And as for every negatively charged electron that flows, it's going to become relatively more positive. And as it becomes more positive here, what's going to happen here? Well, again, now that it gets more positive here, we're going to have negatively charged electrons start flowing in this direction. So for every electron that flows here, it's going to become relatively more positive, and as it becomes relatively more positive, now we're going to have negatively charged electrons start flowing in this direction. So as those negatively charged electrons start flowing in this direction, this region is going to become more negative, and this region is going to become more positive because it's losing those negatively charged electrons. And again, the same kind of thing is going on here. Again, this region was originally neutral, and this was negative, low in electric potential, more on the negative side. So now we know these negatively charged electrons are going to start to flow in this direction. Because again, this region is negative, this is neutral, and now it's becoming positive here, so now these negatively charged electrons are going to start flowing. So as those negatively charged electrons flow in this direction, because again, that's energetically favorable to flow to regions of relatively higher electric potential, this region is going to start to become negative. So notice what's happening. We're having all these electrons flowing, so we're accumulating charge on these capacitors. And again, that's what capacitors do. They store charge. But something important to realize is whenever we have capacitors in series, they're going to store the exact same amount of charge. And that's just something you just need to memorize and get familiar with. Whenever you have capacitors in series, they're going to store the same amount of charge for ex precisely this, this reason. Because as we have one electron flow in this direction, one electron is going to flow there and one electron is going to flow there. So they're all storing the exact same amount of charge. However, you might ask exactly how much charge, to, if we have a 2 farad capacitor and a 3 farad capacitor, exactly how much charge are they going to store? And again, remember, whenever we have capacitors in series, they're going to store the same amount of charge. Even though this is a 2 farad capacitor and this is a 3 farad capacitor, that doesn't matter. As long as we have 2 capacitors in series, or we could have 3 capacitors in series, whenever we have capacitors in series, they're going to store the same amount of charge. However, how much charge are, are these 2 capacitors going to store? Well, again, to determine this, we use this equation, which we learned in the previous video. If you have a, a circuit and you know the voltage of the circuit and you multiply it by the total capacitance of the circuit, it will equal the amount of charge on the capacitors. And again, we, we've learned about this uh, equation in previous videos. So again, we know this circuit, we have a 10 volt battery. However, what's the total capacitance of the circuit? If we have a 2 farad capacitor and a 3 farad capacitor in series, what's the total capacitance? So again, we also learned how to do this in previous videos. We learned if we have a 2 farad capacitor and a 3 farad capacitor in series, we know how we, how we solve what, what they're equal to, the total capacitance of these two capacitors in series. We essentially take the product uh, the, of them, so 2 times 3, and divide it by the sum of them, 2 plus 3. And again, we learned this in the previous video, so that gives us 6 over 5. So now we know if we have one capacitor that's 6 over 5 farads, it's identical to having a 2 farad capacitor and a 3 farad capacitor in series. These two capacitors capacitors are essentially identical. They have identical amount of capacitance. And again, if this is confusing, watch my previous video. I have a link of it below because we, uh, we talked about this. So now that we know this, we know this capacitor essentially has a total capacitance of 6 over 5 farads. This is essentially identical to having a 6 over 5 farad capacitor. So that's the total capacitance of the circuit, 6 over 5 farads. So now we could solve the current, the, the charge, the total amount of charge, which is 12 coulombs. So now we know, for example, with this circuit, we know this capacitor will store 12 
coulombs. And again, we know why this is, because we're going to have those electrons start flowing, so we're going to store that charge. But again, whenever we have capacitors in series, even though they have different capacitances, whenever we have capacitors in series, they're going to store the same amount of charge. We've explained that. So they're both going to store 12 coulombs worth of charge. And again, it's for this exact same reason, because as we have one electron flow in this direction, one electron's gonna flow in this direction, so we're gonna start to accumulate charge. And the same idea, as we have one electron flow here, one electron's gonna flow there, and one electron's gonna flow there, and they're all gonna store the same amount of charge. So now we know, but both of these, whenever we have a capacitor storing 12 coulombs, and then again, we know when we, when we decompress it and we put them in series, we know whenever we have capacitors in series, they store the same amount of charge. And that's just something you just need to memorize and, and get familiar with. So now we know. Now we know both of these capacitors store 12 coulombs worth of charge. But now let's talk about a different question. We know this battery, this is the 12 volt battery. So it creates this region high in electric potential, high in positiveness, and this region relatively lower in electric potential, lower in positiveness. So we're going to create this difference in voltage. So again, let's say this lead is at positive 10 volts, positive 10 volts, and let's say this lead is at zero volts. So now we created this difference in electric potential, this voltage of 10 volts, the difference in electric potential. So now we know this lead is at positive 10 volts and we know it's it's connected with this conductive wire to this entire region so now we know this entire orange region is at positive 10 volts so this entire region is at positive 10 volts and again we learned about this in our video when we were talking about resistors and, and voltage and again we know this lead is at zero volts and it's connected to this entire region so this entire region of the circuit is at zero volts this entire region is at zero volts so now we know this entire region is at positive 10 volts, this entire region is at 0 volts, so what's going on with these capacitors? Well, we must be having drops in voltages. We're having a drop in voltage here, and we're having a drop in voltage here, and if you were to add those two drops in voltages, it would be a total drop of 10 volts. So that's what's going on, and that's something else you should be familiar with. Whenever you have capacitors, they're, they're having a drop in voltage. There's a, there's a drop in voltage in this capacitor, and there's also a drop in voltage in this capacitor. So exactly how much drop of volts, how much drop in voltage is going on in this capacitor? Well, to determine that, we use this equation. If, if we have a capacitor, and we take the, the drop in voltage of that capacitor, and we multiply it by the capacitance of that capacitor, it equals the charge stored on the, that capacitor. It'll equal the charge stored on that capacitor. So let's, uh, let's, let's do this. So let's say we have this situation going on. So let's say we have this, this circuit. So again, we have this equation. The, the drop in voltage of a capacitor equals the capacitance of the capacitor multiplied by the charge stored on the capacitor. So now we can solve the drop in voltage of this capacitor. The drop in voltage of the capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of the capacitor, so that's 2 farads, equals the charge stored on the capacitor. And we already previously determined that this capacitor stores 12 coulombs width of charge. So now we can solve for this drop in voltage, and we would get a drop of voltage of 6 volts. So now we know this capacitor has a drop in voltage of 6 volts. So if we're at positive 10 volts and we have a drop of 6 volts, we know this entire region must be at 4 volts, positive 4 volts. So now we know this region is at positive 4 volts and this region is at 0 volts, then we must also have a drop in voltage. And again, whenever we have a capacitor, we have a drop in voltage. So if we have this capacitor, what's going to be the drop in voltage? Well, we already can infer that it must be 4 volts, but how can we prove that? Well, again, we can use this equation. The drop in voltage of a capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of the capacitor equals the charge stored on the capacitor. And again, we know this capacitor stores 12 coulombs worth of charge. We know the capacitance of this capacitor is 3 farads. So now we can solve the drop in voltage of this capacitor. We can solve the drop in voltage. And again, if we were to solve this, we would get a drop in voltage of 4 volts. And again, that, 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 that's consistent with what we've explained. So the point is, whenever you have capacitors in series, they store the same amount of charge. And whenever you have capacitors, they have a drop in voltage. And again, realize the difference between these two equations. This equation models the entire circuit when we know the voltage source of a circuit and we know the total capacitance of a circuit, we can find the charge stored on the circuit. 
the, the, the capacitors. However, this equation is specific for an individual capacitor. If we, we can find the drop in voltage of an individual capacitor, if we multiply it by the capacitance of that individual capacitor, multiplied by the charge stored on that capacitor, then we can solve the drop in voltage of the capacitor. So, so let's do a different example. Let's say we have this, this circuit. And again, we know we have a 10 volt battery. So we know this lead is at positive 10 volts and this lead is at zero volts. So we know this entire part of the circuit is at positive 10 volts. When we know this entire part of the circuit is at zero volts. So therefore we can see on both of these capacitors, we have a drop of 10 volts. We have a drop of 10 volts here and we have a drop of 10 volts here. And that's the only explanation if we're at 10 volts here and zero volts here, on both capacitors, we must be having drops of 10 volts. And that's just another thing you should be familiar with. Whenever you have capacitors in parallel, then they both will have the exact identical drop in voltage. And we have these two capacitors in parallel, so they'll both have the same drop in voltage. They'll both have a drop of 10 volts. So, so let's analyze this. Let's analyze the circuit. Well, again, we know, we know we can solve the charge on a circuit. And again, we can use this equation. If we know the voltage of a circuit and we multiply it by the total capacitance of the circuit, that'll equal the charge stored on the capacitor. So again, we have a 10 volt battery of the circuit. We have a 10 volt battery. However, what's the total capacitance of the circuit? If we have a two farad and a, a, a one farad and two farad capacitor in parallel, what's the total capacitance that we would plug in? Well, again, we learned in, in previous videos, if we have capacitors in parallel, we just add them. We would add one farad plus two farads. So again, we know a one farad capacitor plus a two farad capacitor in parallel is identical to having one three farad capacitor. A three farad capacitor is identical to having a one farad and two farad capacitor in parallel. So we know the total capacitance of the circuit of, of these circuits would be three farads. So now we can solve the charge. The, the charge is 30 coulombs. So now we know this capacitor stores 30 coulombs. So, but again, remember what's going on here. This, this capacitor is identical to having a one farad capacitor and two farad capacitor in parallel. And a way you can think about it is this one farad capacitor is this part. And this two farad capacitor is this part. And they make up uh, uh, these two, this one farad and two farad capacitor make up a three farad capacitor. And that's a way you can think about it. So this entire capacitor stores 30 coulombs worth of charge 30 coulombs worth of charge. So therefore, these two capacitors in total must store 30 coulombs worth of charge. And, and again, that's something else you should be familiar with. So again, in total, they should store 30 coulombs worth of charge. Because again, we know they're identical to this 3 farad capacitor, which stores 30 coulombs worth of charge. So these two capacitors sh should store 30 coulombs worth of charge. However, how can we prove exactly how much this one stores and this one stores? We know in total, they, equal, they store 30 coulombs worth of charge. So how much does this one store and how much does this one store? Well, again, that's where this equation comes. If we have a single capacitor and we know the drop in voltage of that capacitor and we multiply it by the capacitance of that capacitor, that equals the charge stored on that capacitor. And again, this equation is used for first one individual capacitor. This equation is used for the entire circuit. This equation is used for an uh, individual capacitor. So let's, let's think about it. Well, we know this capacitor has a drop of 10 volts. We already explained that. So this capacitor has a drop of 10 volts. So this capacitor has a drop of 10 volts. And we know we have a one farad capacitor, a one farad capacitor. So now we can solve, so, solve the charge on that capacitor, which again would give us 10 coulombs. So now we know this capacitor stores 10 coulombs worth of charge. So what about this capacitor? Well, again, we know the drop in voltage of a capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of the capacitor equals the charge stored on that capacitor. So again, we know we have a drop of 10 volts. We explained we have a drop of 10 volts. So this capacitor has a drop of 10 volts. The capacitance of the capacitor is two farads. So therefore, this capacitor stores 20 coulombs. So now we know this capacitor stores 20 coulombs. And does this make sense? Well, yeah. This one stores 10 coulombs, this one stores 20 coulombs, so in total, it stores 30 coulombs, which is consistent with what we said. So, so that's what's going on. So these are just a bunch of random rules that you just need to be familiar with when it comes to circuits.